Good day, everyone. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Today, I'm going to be talking about something a little different. I'm going to be talking about uh, some some uh, toxicological um, terminology. And one of the important things, uh, the important concepts in toxicology, uh, this is certainly point of care toxicology, this applies for to uh, pre-hospital providers and perhaps uh, providers, uh, both. Um, a physician and non-physician providers in, in an emergency room or a casualty center setting and that is how do we when we have somebody we're dealing with somebody that that uh, has had some sort of exposure maybe they've overdosed or they've been exposed to some sort of toxic substance um, how, how can we tell what what's going on with them what what the substance is and, and can we even tell what the specific substance is there, there are literally millions upon millions of substances that can cause toxico toxicological emergencies and it, it is possible for anyone to memorize all those but what we do know is a lot of uh, certain substances share certain chemical characteristics and they create um, very similar physiological effects and they're treated in very similar ways and what we can do is we can group all of these substances into um, this concept known as a toxidrome and what a toxidrome is, is it's basically a syndrome or a constellation of signs and symptoms that point us toward or make us uh, believe that a certain classification of toxins is involved. And so uh, the concept of a toxidrome is very handy because it can help us narrow down um, the differential of a uh, differential diagnosis of what the substance is involved in, of course, uh, that helps us narrow down what the, the physiology will be, what the pharmacokinetics will be, what the pharmacodynamics will be, and ultimately what, what will be involved in decontamination and, and treatment and uh, possibly uh, antidote um, type agents. So when we talk about toxidromes, there are five, there are five classical toxidromes, and, and those toxidromes include cholinergic syndrome, anticholinergic syndrome, hallucinogenic syndrome, uh, narcotic or opiate syndrome and sympathomimetic syndrome. So let's. I'm just going to run through these very quickly, and we maybe can spend some more time talking about them in depth. Uh, so cholinergic syndrome. Well, cholinergic, of course, uh, deals with acetylcholine. Specifically, uh, a cholinergic syndrome or cholinergic crisis uh, deals with the postganglionic uh, receptors of the parasympathetic nervous system. So we are talking about parasympathetic postganglionic receptors. Uh, these will include things like nicotinic and muscarinic receptors and the different uh, subclasses of receptors. Uh, for the most part, what we can expect uh, with somebody that is in experiencing a cholinergic syndrome, we can expect um, something called sludge, mnemonic known as sludge. And what that stands for is that stands for salivation, lactation, um, <clears throat> urination, defecation, gastrointestinal um, upset or crisis, and emesis. Uh, so they have, they're really wet and really sticky. They have lots of secretions. Um, you know, obviously, because this is a very, clearly a um, cholinergic uh, crisis that we're talking about, and some people even add an M to the end of that sludge. Um, for meiosis, which is dial or excuse me, not dilation, uh, which is constriction of the pupils. Um, meiosis is constriction. Midriosis or midriosis is uh, dilation. Um, the most common types of agents um, that can cause a cholinergic syndrome are generally going to be derivatives of the organophosphate uh, group of molecules, and these include things like um, pesticides, insecticides and can even include the weapons of mass destruction agents, um, uh, nerve agents like VX, VD, sarin, and so on. Okay, so the next one is the anticholinergic syndrome. Anticholinergic syndrome is just, just that. It is, um, it is a syndrome where I have a blocking. I actually block the cholinergic response. So anticholinergic, I'm blocking the parasympathetic nervous system. Typically, the blockade will occur at um, postganglionic parasympathetic receptors, nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. Um, and anticholinergic syndrome, um, will basically I look at uh, like an atropine type response. What do we get with we, when we get with atropine? Well, we get someone who's very dry, 
We get someone who's tachycardic. We get someone who may have dilated pupils. We get flushed uh, skin. We can get delirium. Um, we can have hemodynamic changes as well. And there's an old saying that the, these patients, um, you know, there, there's kind of these old sayings that they look like they're mad as a hatter and they're dry as a bone and so on and so forth and there's kind of these these little things that, that you can kind of look up to help memorize that but basically what an anticholinergic syndrome is is it is um, literally a uh, literally an antagon you are antagonizing the parasympathetic nervous system okay the hallucinogenic syndrome is just that it is associated with uh, a myriad of hallucinogenic substances these conclude things like uh, LSD uh, PCP for example um, and a whole myriad of substances can kind of fall into here. Uh, hallucina uh, hallucinogen, uh, uh, hallucinations, uh, central nervous system dysfunction. Um, again, you know, LSD, uh, mescaline, certain types of mushrooms, uh, fencyclidine or PCP can all uh, fall into agents in the hallucinogenic syndrome. Uh, the next syndrome that we run into is a narcotic or opiate syndrome. We should be fairly familiar with this. Uh, this is caused by a myriad of the, just a whole bunch of narcotic um, opiate type substances that can include codeine, fentanyl, morphine, opium, oxycodone, MS, cotton, meperidine, or demerol, um, even heroin overdose. Lots of things here. Uh, what do these patients look like? Well, they have my meiosis, pinpoint pupils, nausea, vomiting. They can be hypotensive, CNS depression, respiratory depression, um, can even have coma. Um, in some cases, even develop pulmonary edema, uh, bradycardia, death, hypothermia if they've been laying down um, on the ground for a long period of time. Uh, and the last syndrome is something called sympathomimetic syndrome. And sympathomimetic syndrome is, is or sympathic mimetic uh, toxidrome or syndrome is just that. It is an, an, a substance or an agent that mimics the sympathetic nervous system, uh, a, a sympathetic response. Um, these can include things like amphetamines, methamphetamine, uh, cocaine, ephedrine, um, certain types of long-acting uh, beta, uh, beta, uh, beta 2 agonists, uh, long-acting uh, bronchodilators, for example. Um, Ritalin um, can cause a sympathomimetic syndrome. Uh, so lots of different agents there, and as you might have guessed, some agents can cross over into other toxidromes. It's not... Um, a static uh, absolute list. You know, certain substances may cause bolo both hallucinogenic and sympathomimetic uh, syndromes. You know, something like um, PCP, for example. Um, so uh, these aren't static per se. Okay, so once we go work through the toxidrome, that kind of narrows things down and it narrows our treatment um, uh, modalities down a little bit. Um, clearly, uh, supportive care and looking out for your sa your health and safety of course will be paramount um, you know things supportive care ABCs managing airway breathing circulatory issues um, cholinergic syndromes you know there's specific medications such as atropine 2-PAM chloride and diazepam for seizures you can use um, anticholinergic syndrome maybe you want to look at diazepam for certain patients Hallucinogenic, again, we may need to look at, you know, obviously, ABCs, uh, calming, reducing environmental stimuli, um, and um, giving benzodiazepines if needed. Uh, the narcotic uh, syndromes, you might need to uh, look at um, aggressive airway management uh, and giving, uh, perhaps, um, judicious, um, giving Narcan or Naloxone judiciously. And then some pathomimetic syndromes, you can look at, again, you know, limiting environmental stimuli, uh, you might even need to give nitrates if they're having, uh, you know, vasospasms like a cocaine, uh, cocaine ST elevate, uh, cocaine associated ST elevation, you know, nitroglycerin, benzodiazepines, um, and then of course certain agents uh, within certain times. You know, you may consider things like activated charcoal, lavage, but again. If, if airway uh, compromises is an issue, you would never um, want to have anybody uh, drinking anything. Okay, guys, so this is just a basic rundown of, of the toxidromes, and um, hopefully uh, what I talked about uh, made some sense, and I hope you guys enjoyed uh, kind of a little different thing to talk about uh, today. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.